All right, class. So we're now in week 14, and our topic for today is module 14, the philosophy of Immanuel Kant. Now, this is our set of objectives for today. First is to understand Immanuel Kant's philosophy of goodwill. The second is to learn about Kant's categorical imperative. And the third one is to know the kingdom of ends. But who was Immanuel Kant? Now, he was born April 22, 1724, and he died February 12, 1804 in Königsberg. He was known as the founder of critical philosophy, and Immanuel Kant was a German philosopher that believed in the dignity of human reason, duty, goodwill, and the ends of human actions. So let's discuss first his ideals about duty. Now, duty means that it is anything that has to be done or omitted. Now, there are four kinds of duty, namely the natural duty, the positive duty, the affirmative duty, and the negative duty. Now, what is natural duty? Now, these are moral duty of citizens to obey the laws of their state and God in relation to the eternal law. The examples of natural duty are duty to worship God and the duty to value human life. Now, the second type of duty is called the positive duty. Now, this refers to an obligation to do an act on the part of the person on whom it is imposed. Examples, duty to hear mass, pay taxes, and tuition fees. Now, the next kind of duty is the affirmative duty. Now, these are things that adhere to moral obligation. So, the examples are to inherent law of doing good and avoiding evil, helping the poor, and aid the needy and the likes. Now, the last kind of duty is the negative duty. Now, it refers to the moral obligation to avoid or refrain from doing something. Now, the examples of this duty is the prohibitions of no smoking, no littering or loitering, as well as legal decisions. Okay, so then let's move on to the main focus of our topic for today, and that is Kant's philosophy of goodwill. Now, Kant believed that reason, or reasoning skills, made all laws and makes everyone obey all laws at the same time. And this is called the autonomy of reason. Now, Immanuel Kant defined autonomy as to act in accordance with objective morality rather than under the influence of desire. Immanuel Kant also defined goodwill as to act out out of a sense of moral obligation or duty. Now, in connection to goodwill, it is Kant's categorical imperative. Now, this imperative, there are actually two kinds. When we say imperative, it refers to command. Now, the first kind of imperative is the hypothetical, and the second is the categorical. But what is hypothetical imperative? Dapat one thing. Okay, now in hypothetical imperative class, these commands that are dependent on the goals to be fulfilled. Commands that apply, take note of this, apply only in particular circumstances for particular people who happen to have these desires or these goals. If you want A, then you must do B. Example, brushing your teeth to avoid bad breath. Go to school to fulfill your scholastic needs and etc. Now, why is it why is it called hypothetical? It it's considered as hypothetical because it depends upon the goals to be fulfilled. In categorical imperative, these are commands that are universal and impartial. Now, why it is considered universal? It is universal because all people in virtue of being rational would act the same way. Meaning each and every one of us will be given the same reaction 
depends on the situation. Now, why it's considered impartial? It is impartial because their actions are not guided by their own biases, but because they respect the dignity and autonomy of every human being. Now, according to Immanuel Kant, it is a rule of conduct that is unconditional or absolute for all Asians. The validity of claim of which does not depend on any desire or end. That is from Britannica.com. Now, the example of categorical imperatives are universal love, world peace. Now, Immanuel Kant also dubbed that Categorical imperative is the supreme principle of morality as a standard of rationality. And he considered that all immoral actions are irrational because they violate categorical imperative. Because we think the same way, Immanuel Kant noted this as the kingdom of ends. Kant defined it as a systematic union of different rational beings through common laws. But the question is, is it attainable? Now, the answer is yes. It is because as long as men think the same way, which he deemed as categorical imperative, it is attainable.